I want to welcome welcome you to church this morning. It's on now, isn't it? <laughs> Those who are watching live streaming on Facebook and later on YouTube, I want to thank you. You won't need your hearing aids this morning. <laughs> oh, it's fun to laugh a little bit, isn't it? So uh, welcome. Glad you're here. You know, uh, my wife loves uh, the one uh, video of Jesus because it's uh, she calls it the smiling Jesus. Sometimes uh, she doesn't think I smile enough. But anyway, so uh, I'm not Jesus, so it doesn't make any difference, I suppose. <laughs> so let's pray. Father God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. And thank you for allowing me to be here this morning to worship you, the great God, the God of ontological being, life in himself that gives life to us, and he lives forever. We pray, Father, that you would give us your Holy Spirit today, that we would live forever in your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness that you would give us your life which is eternal in jesus name we worship you father son and holy spirit amen would you mind standing and greeting the people around you welcome them then this morning is beautiful crisp clean morning Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, and not as their teachers of the law. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the wisdom that we find in it. Um, we just pray, Lord, that as we worship this morning, that we could just bring our whole selves to you, Father. Not just the, the good-looking parts that we present to the world, but maybe even the dark parts that we keep hidden away. We just bring all that to the altar this morning and lay that before you. Give us hearts of flesh this morning that can be molded and changed to become more like you, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave his life for me. In Jesus' name, we affirm your word and your love for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The kids want to come up for um, their young message for young disciples. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. This is the bonus day. You know what? God honors you coming to church every Sunday. You realize that? Huh? Do you realize that? And you know, um, the longer you do it, the more he honors you. But you know what? If you didn't come two weeks ago, well, we didn't have church two weeks ago because of the crazy weather. But anyways, but anytime you miss, you miss a lot. So today, I got these things. Do you guys like Oreos? I like them. Do you like Oreos? I don't know if I can open these. Maybe I can. Oh boy, I shouldn't have done that. Do you guys like Oreos? Do you? 
You know, when I, was a, when I was a kid, we used to sing the song. Do you know this song? Girls are nice, but oh, what icing comes with Oreos. The very best cookie ever made. Girls are nice, but oh, the icing comes with Oreos. The very best cookie ever made. You like that? Ah, I got it open. Ah. Who? Who? I got plenty. Look at this. There's a lot of imitations, but there's only one Oreo, isn't there? Huh? You guys, look at this. Would you like to have an Oreo today? Would you? I'm going to eat. Would you like an Oreo? You got gloves. Look at this. Would you like an Oreo? Would you like an Oreo? Would you? Boy, you can smell it. Can you smell the chocolate? Hmm? Can you smell the sugar? Can you? We like you know. I know you're not a sweet lady. Now you're sweet, but you don't like sweets. And that's okay. You want one? Yeah. You want one, Kinsley? Jordan, you want a cookie? All right. You think your sister wants one? Your sister has a sweet tooth. Yeah, you betcha. Okay. Well, you can eat it. You can eat it. How do you usually eat it? Can you do that, Dylan or Devlin? Like you. Yeah. Can you do that? What? Why do you do that? Because it just like the taste of the frosting. Yeah, I like the taste of the frosting, don't you? You you did yours too. How many took yours? Did you? You took yours apart too. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that something? Did you guys take yours apart? Is, it, is the frosting the best part? Do you like this the best part? Hmm? Is that best part? Hmm? It's pretty good. You want one? We all need some. You all need one? Can you can you hand those to Terry? No. Silas, can you hand those to Terry? You, you want another one? You want another one? You want another one? I can tell it in your eyes. Boy. You want another one? All right, come on up here. Yeah, you want to turn that one in and get this one. You want, you want to turn yours in too? Or? There you go. You want another one? Nope. You want another? One? There you go. You gonna take yours home? Are you gonna take yours home with you? Okay. Anybody? You want? One? Oh, look at that! Oh, that's good, isn't it? She wants another one. There you go. All right. All right. So, huh? Would you get the other piece in there? Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to talk about, in the Bible, in the Bible, what do you think, well, I don't know, the Bible, what do you think the cream between us knowing God and learning about God is? What do you think holds those two things together? What do you think? You have an idea? Well, I'll tell you. Our scripture this morning talks about faith working through love. And that, uh, that Christ would be um, dwell in your hearts by faith in love. And so love is the cream, is the best part between experiencing God and learning more about God. And so, just like you guys like the cream between the cookies, um, God wants us to love him experiences love for us and in turn he wants us to love other people okay you got that we am gonna turn yours in okay father god we give you all the praise and all the glory and just thank you for um your love that transcends all our experiences bless these children and fill them with your love and fill them with uh, the love that they have for you and they have for other people and to know that uh, you truly uh, care for them and you truly love them and call them into um, faith in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All righty.
I did that, oh, it must have been um, 10 or 12 years ago, I did that same, same children's message. And uh, it was Communion Sunday. And uh, yeah, it was Communion Sunday. <laughs> and uh, Catherine Toon, who is the granddaughter of uh, Dave and and uh, Pat Miller went home that Sunday after church and said, you know, when we have communion, we, we just serve bread and wine, but your church serves, serves Oreo cookies. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think I should write a book of all the funny things that, that uh, you've heard and people talk about. And, so anyway, <laughs> so are there any joys or concerns that you would like to share? I know, Terry, I know, well, Terry went to East Sunday School. I probably should have sent the cookies with her. <laughs> oh, yes, that was sugar. Sugar high. Um, as many of you know, Kevin um, has been out in Nebraska with his dad. His dad was put in the hospital on Wednesday with pneumonia. Um, also, they had a difficult time um, getting his oxygen up. Um, they finally, last night, put a mask on him instead of just the nasal. And for the first time in many years, his oxygen was up to 93. Wow, that's great. Yep. Yeah. Um, we were hoping he was going to get to come home today, but I just got a message during music time that they're keeping him another day to give him more antibiotics. And um, but Kevin's going to come home, and um, but there he's just still asking for prayers as they're going to run some tests on his heart this week um, to see whether there was any damage to his heart. So. But, so he just asked for prayers for that. And I do know that Kevin was there by himself with his dad yesterday. And I just, I praise God that Kevin got to talk to his dad about faith and and pray with him. And That's special. So, yeah, it is. It's special. <laughs> the little child shall lead them. Yeah. You know, I always wanted... Uh, my dad to tell me he loved me, you know, and in that generation, you know, they say, well, I love you, of course I love you. Look, I work every day and I bring home money and I feed you and put food on the table, and of course I love you. Have you ever heard that? Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of nice to just have someone say, I love you. Yeah. So, you know what I did? I told him I loved him. <laughs> and they gave him permission to say, I love you. <laughs> Anyways. I'd appreciate prayers for my grandson, Callan. He has strep throat and just protection for the family that no one else gets it. Thank you. And probably no one gets COVID. Along with it. Okay. You want me to hold it? Sure. <laughs> Um, I hope I can say this without sounding silly. Um, for the past few months, I've been really, like maybe some of you, I listen to the news and I read the news and I have been so um, sad about things that are going on, just sad. And um, I don't know, the last few days, it's like God's made a turnaround in my heart. Um, we have a young neighbor who in the cold every time we get a little snow he's out there plowing everybody out not just us but everybody and yesterday um, Pamela and Dennis Brogston are our paper carriers and Jim and I being old people we didn't get out and shovel our sidewalk like we should have and the kids were gone so we didn't have anybody to shovel and um, so we, they came trudging through the snow up to their knees. It was up to their knees in our front porch. 
and I heard Jim speaking to him and he said, you know, that's fine. We, we got big boots, we can do it. And I thought, you know, these things are so little, but if we just help each other a little bit, and if we just reach out when we see somebody maybe needs something, it means so much. Um, the night that uh, we packed the food boxes, um, actually we spent the afternoon packing the food boxes and then we delivered them that night and I looked around at the people, Roxanne and Rod and Karen and Harry and all these wonderful people, Jack and, and Andy and Brant, all these wonderful people, they didn't have to come in the cold and spend their day doing that, but they did. And we laughed and we had a good time. It wasn't like, oh, we got to do this, you know. Drudgery. And when we delivered them, the joy and the thankfulness from these people was overwhelming. They invited, I wondered where Andy and the boys were. They had been in visiting with everybody. They invited them in and, you know, they probably had coffee and cookies. I don't know. But... I don't know, it's just been on my heart that we need to, um, and I need to do better to reach out to people, uh, even people that we don't know, people that maybe um, are hurting, people that need a little something, uh, and maybe we can all just raise each other up with God's help. If you want, I don't think it's silly. And you could have preached that. I preached? No, you could Can have we go home that. now? <laughs> I just forgot to mention, um, Kevin would also like prayers for his employee, Ryan, that had the double lung transplant. Things were going very, very well, and then this week he took a turn, and um, they um, had to innovate him, and then they, I think they were planning on doing surgery and putting a trach in, but I know that their family would like prayers, because he is not doing very well, and he's only 25 years old, so. But it was a lung disorder he was born with. Okay, that's a uh, very, very difficult surgery. We have a prayer request and a praise. We are great grandparents. We had a grandson, Cooper Mark Harrison. Um, unfortunately, his mother has had to be rehospitalized for severe preeclampsia complications. So we would really appreciate your prayers for her. But Cooper is doing very well, eating well, growing. He only weighed four pounds, five ounces when he was born, but he's doing very, very well. And what's his mom's name? Kayla. Kayla? Kayla. All right. Shall we pray? Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory and thank you for the joy of knowing you and the love that you have for us, the love we have for you and the love for other people. For that is um, the first and greatest commandment, and the second one is like it. Father God, we pray that uh, you would uh, be with uh, Kevin as he continues to minister as dad, and uh, I just thank you for the um, conversations that uh, he's had with him. I thank you for the eternal significance of those conversations. I thank you for the eternal life of those conversations. And I'm thankful for the peace that those conversations brings to everyone. We pray for Ryan, Father, who has had this um, double lung transplant. I pray, dear God, that uh, his body would receive these lungs, 
and that you would miraculously heal him and watch over him and bless him. We pray for Cooper, Father, and thank you for this little child, healthy, normal little child. We pray for his mother, Kayla, who has had difficulty with medical condition. We pray that you would heal her by the power of your Holy Spirit. Just thank you that we can present our cares and uh, concerns to you, and that you hear our prayers, and that you heal our diseases, and you forgive our sins. We thank you for um, the work of the deacons, and I thank you, Father, for uh, the love and the joy that they have uh, shared um, with the food boxes and with the Christmas gifts and with the ministry that they have reached out to. And I pray, dear God, that um, you would um, continue to put in our hearts to reach out to people that we see, that we know, that we don't know, that come across our paths, and that we would uh, share the, the love of Christ with them. Please forgive me for um, the times, the time the other day that I did not do that, and I pray that you would um, forgive me of my sin and uh, put the Holy Spirit um, in my heart that I would continue to uh, reach out to other people. We pray to God that uh, the spirit of love in this fallen and evil world, the world that we continue to hear um, the bad things and the terrible things and the lying, the stealing, the cheating, all the things that go on in the world, Father. We pray that, um, as you tell us, not to love the world or the things in the world, but we can minister your love to this dying world and share Christ's love with other people. And I pray, Father, that you would empower us to do that and lead us in the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, dear God, that you would uh, continue to... Um, work in our lives, that you would open our minds and our hearts and our ears to your word. And uh, we pray to God that um, you would lead us in the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. If people are listening to our service today and here and wherever, if they have never consented to your love and invitation for eternal life. I pray that through the continuation of what has been and what is happening, that they will do that. We pray, Father, that you would lead us all by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, for glory, pray. Amen. Shall we pray the Lord's Prayer together? Oh, we ought to pray for Callan, too. Father, I pray for Callan, the little boy that has strep throat. I pray that you would heal this infection. I pray that you would keep it from spreading. And I pray, dear God, that you would surround him with your holy angels and protect his family from the COVID virus. I pray, dear God, that you would uh, bless him. I thank you for healing uh, my family of, of the COVID, and we just pray that uh, as they continue to uh, recuperate, Father, that you would fill them with your love. We pray our prayer in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Mm. Okay, now we're going to read uh, from Ephesians here. If you have your Bibles, uh, you can turn. Maybe you have your Bible on your phone, or maybe you have your Bible that you bring. I guess that's kind of interesting. I've always wanted to have a church that people brought their Bibles. Now I guess I got that because people bring their phones. <laughs> Huh? The Bible's on their phone, right? As long as they open it up and read it. 
Okay, this is from Ephesians. This is Paul's prayer. We're just gonna we're just taking a little bit at a time. It's just packed with um, it's just packed with uh, the Spirit of God in it. And so, um, and if you remember Ephesians chapter three, Paul started for this reason, and then he goes into this discourse about the mystery of the gospel that the Gentiles are part of the promises of God, and he goes on, and then he. He begins at verse 14. He says, oh, I'm going to start uh, for my reason. And so, so in verse 14, he reads this, and I'll read this this morning. This is the word of God. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven on earth is named, derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. May God bless uh, his bless to us this reading from his holy word, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, we pray that as we look at another verse of this prayer that you have uttered by your Holy Spirit through Paul, that we might, we might know you. We might know you and we might love you and because you love us and we love you that that love would be manifested to other people. We just pray to God that uh, you would just do that this morning. And I also pray, Father, if there are people who have never consented to the invitation for your love, that they would, by the Holy Spirit, do that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I guess if I preach too long, I could pass out cookies, right? <laughs> no, I'm not going to preach very long. Okay, here we go. This passage of Scripture, um, and I'm saying that the passage of Scripture here is the cream of the cookie that um, cements, brings together um, the inner working of the Holy Spirit and the ability that he gives so you would know Christ more. Okay? And they come together. Um, uh, they make a whole. They make uh, what um, is good in, in our lives. And so, um, so this morning... He says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit, the Holy Spirit, in your inner being, your mind, will, and emotion, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I'm talking about that in church and in small group. So that you be rooted and grounded in love. So what, what he's saying is, this is the first part of the cookie that he may grant you be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, this is the cream of the cookie, you being rooted and grounded in love. So the other part of the cookie is next week, okay, that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the height, the depth of the love of Christ. Okay, so you got this love of Christ in between the, the knowledge of being strengthened and then to have fuller understanding of what it means to understand the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
It is to God's glory to strengthen their mind, will, and emotion with the Holy Spirit's power. Um, this is what God wants to do in our lives. He wants to transform our thinking so that we would think with the mind of Christ and the mind of Christ we would think according to his will and that our emotions and our will and our actions would be in line with what God wants to do in our lives. For the purpose that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love. And the Holy Spirit work to transform this mind, move us to do the will of God, to do his good pleasure, and to will and to do his good pleasure. Is this interesting, you know, uh, that song, Jesus Messiah, was interesting, that the first part of that um, song is a scripture, and the second part of, uh, the second part of that first verse is a scripture, too. Um, amazing. And so, this would be to us, would motivate you to love God. And in 1 John 4, 19, and 1 John 5, I don't know if you've been reading Good Morning Church or if you read the devotions on Facebook that I've been writing. Um, he loved, we love because he first loved us. In this love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin, that he would satisfy God's holiness and his, by uh, receiving God's complete full wrath upon himself, that we might have our sins forgiven and he would be the just and the justifier of our sins. Christ's love for the true believer produces sure love in our hearts for him. The more I recognize and feed upon Christ's love to me, the more there will be a response to his love. And that's, John says this too. He said, John, John in, in his um, letter, he says, you know, God loves us. And if you want to know if you're really a true believer, is that you love the brethren. If you don't love the brethren, you're not a true believer because how can you not love the people God loves? And God loves these people. And so he wants us to love the people that God loves. Christ's love for us and our love to him. So the scripture gives us two metaphors here. Okay? Two metaphors of how this works in our lives. Our faith is rooted and grounded in love. First, I think it's 1 Corinthians 3, 9. I didn't put that in there. I left that out. For we are God's fellow workers. I believe it's... Um, Ephesians 2.10 where it says, God created you for good works which he has prepared for you to do beforehand. You, and he says here, you are God's field and God's building. Rooted and grounded. Rooted is becoming strengthened in faith in Christ. And, and so, our, so our focus is Christ, his death, our death, his resurrection, our resurrection, his ascension, our ascension, and our reigning with Christ. Completely, being completely identified with Christ. And this verse, I, I think I say this verse just about every, every day. I've been crucified with Christ and no longer I live, but Christ who lives in me. And now the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Jesus taught this too. Sarah read it this morning in Matthew 7. I finally got it right. Um, you'll recognize them by your fruits, by their fruits. So every, health, health, every healthy tree bears good fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. We always recognize people by their fruit. The fruit of love, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The other metaphor is being grounded. Grounded provides a firm basis for beliefs and practice. It is a foundation for you to be steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. The tense of these sentences is a progressive indwelling of Christ in the true believer. Um, Oh, that had been a long time. It was 19 in, the, in um, I don't know, it was in the late 70s, or early 80s. I, when I lived in California, I, I added 896 square feet to my house in California. 
it's a two-story house and uh, addition and I put on and and um, and to keep costs down, uh, it's a kind of a young whippersnapper there, and so I dug the foundation. I dug, you know, the, had the blueprints, and they laid it out. The guy that was going to pour the cement, you know, laid it, I laid it all out, and told me how how deep to dig it. And so I dug it. It was supposed to be seven inches, so I dug it, probably seven inches, eight inches, and I called for the inspector to come because the inspector had to come to make sure I did it right. And he looked at it and he says. It's wrong. I go, what? If the forms were all up and everything, you know, and I was ready for the guy to come and pour the cement. He says, it's wrong. I said, what's, what's wrong with it? He said, well, it's not deep enough. You need to be twice that depth to, to hold a two-story house. So if our faith isn't deep enough, we won't have the faith to hold our lives together in Christ. We have to have that deep foundation in Christ. You know, then the other thing I was, uh, this is when I was really excited about exercise and about a treadmill and probably haven't used it in, I don't know how many years. I walk by it just about every day, feel guilty. I suppose you don't do that, do you? Huh? No, I just got rid of it. You just got rid of it? <laughs> Threw it out of the bird pile? <laughs> well, anyways, so when I was doing it, you know, I'd put my earphone, earbuds in, and I would listen to the music, and I'd listen to preachers preach, and I was going around and going and going and going and going, and then about two minutes in, it would stop. I thought, oh, this is the kind of treadmill I like. You know, after two minutes, I don't have to do it anymore. And then I wait a little while, and I started again, and go two minutes, and it would stop again. I kept doing it and doing it. It was very frustrating. You really don't need a lot of excuses not to exercise. At least I don't. And so I called the company, and they they sent out a guy and. Uh, he said, well, you know why this, is, why this isn't working? I said, no, I have no idea. I am not mechanically inclined. I know nothing about electricity, and I know nothing about treadmills. You don't know nothing, do you? I said, no, I don't. I don't know anything. <laughs> he says, well, it's not grounded. Because it's not grounded, it isn't going to work. And if we're not grounded in Christ... I don't care what you do, you're not going to work. And you're surely, if you're not grounded in Christ, will never have eternal life. And so the Bible says, Jesus teaches this. He gives us the teaching of the foundation. Everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't walk by them is like the wise man who builds his house on the rock. When the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded or grounded on the rock. Later, Paul says, therefore, if you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. He later repeats it in Galatians, for in Christ Jesus, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision counts for anything. You could probably just saw anything else in your life accounts for nothing, but only faith working through love. Being rooted and grounded in love is the connecting point between strengthening through the spirit and the power of the inner being, the mind, the will, and the emotion. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts and faith. You need to be rooted and grounded in love and then to be able to comprehend all the saints, the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. And so you see on the bottom of page two, the yellow there is the cream of the cookie. Not an intellectual knowledge necessarily, but a loving knowledge to what Christ has done for you. Well, you say, what might be the example of this love for Christ? And um, A.W. Pink suggests the Apostle John. 
sometimes called the Apostle of Love. This is the one who leaned on Jesus during the supper, the one Jesus says, I loved, the one who wrote the letters and proclaimed the love of God, five chapters of that, the love God has for all the saints as well, the love we have for him, the love we have for the saints, the love we demonstrate to the world, the love because he first loved us and gave his son a propitiation, meaning he satisfied the wrath of God, took on God's anger for, for us slamming his holiness, because that does make God mad. And Christ took on that anger, justified our sins by dying on the cross for them. But it's just not an intellectual knowledge of God, but a loving knowledge of God. And this is, this is um, where, you, where you have to f figure this out for yourself. It's like, um, have you ever fallen in love? And there's this, there's this connection, there's this chemistry. You know what you know, because you know what you know. You know, and it's, it's like, I think that's basically um, the feeling that you end up having with God. There's this, this connection. It's not just knowing God, knowing about Him and what He does and His attributes and his work in Christ, the work of the Holy Spirit, all the salvation history through the creation, through the prophets, to the ministry of Jesus, to the early church, to today, until his return. We know all these things. But, but the question is, do you love him? It's just... Um, it's being more than being helped out of trouble. The other day, I was plowing snow, and I got pretty much plowing snow, and so I drove my four-wheeler up to uh, the gas station, and I got gas, and I was coming back, and I saw Marvin didn't have his, his, his driveway plowed, and, and so um, I thought, well, you know, I got time. I'm, I'm just gonna start plowing his driveway out. Anyways, the madness and the meanness of me doing that, it's not such a great thing. I, he had a four-wheeler to use, and I thought, ha-ha, he won't be able to use his four-wheeler because I'll be able to get it all done for him and da -da -da, take his fun away. <laughs> well, anyways, so I'm plowing, well, because I thought he was still on the bus route, but he was, he was home waiting for it to finish snowing. And so I was out there plowing, and I pulled up, and I pushed in, and all of a sudden, my cable broke. I've had more trouble with that kind of stuff, and I'm just not very mechanical. And it's quite frustrating, and I, I went home and told my wife, well, anyways, some wonderful people at Van Oys helped me fix the thing, and I was so thankful for them to do that. It was great. But God's love is more than just being helped out of a jam. God's love for us is more than just helping somebody. God's love for us is realizing that through his love and dying on the cross that he's given us eternal life. That I, miserably, me, doesn't have to spend eternity in hell. We must love. We must love before we can know what love is. We must, as Pink says, we must experience the pains of starvation before we know what a joy food really is. We must experience the pains of sorrow and loss before we realize how much great love is. We must have love to Christ before we can know what Christ, love to Christ really is. We must constantly experience the love of Christ before we can know what the love of Christ is. We must have 
a warm, steady love for Christ in order to have a deep and living possession of the love of Christ. And so when I woke up this morning, I said, this is not what people hear. And, and God woke me up this morning and he said, you know what? It's the Oreo cookie, George. I said, what? It's the Oreo cookie. You got to have the love of God to cement what you know and what you'll experience later on. You got to have that love to understand that the love of Christ is what what cements the the whole whole Christian life together. And so in Colossians 3, 12 and 15, it says, Put on then as Christ's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another. This is what I said. You could preach this, Marcia. Bearing with one another. And if anyone has a complaint so heartily against one another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive and what? And above all these things, he says, put on love. It binds everything together. It cements everything together. And then he says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns with spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So I guess the point that God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit wanted you to know today is to experience the first commandment of Jesus. It's in yellow on your paper.